Uh, so first I want to give you a reference, you have it on your slides there, and that is Paul Berenger and David Weber Life Cycle Cost Tutorial, uh, which was delivered at the 5th International Conference on Process Plant Reliability at Houston, Texas in 1996. Uh, it's a, that's a, well, I think it's a good tutorial. It has, it has some problems. It has some problems in the sense that the language is not so good and so on, but the, but the, uh, the, the work that's done there is very good. So we'll, we'll look into that. We'll use that as a basis for our slides as well. Uh, so okay, we start with some life cycle cost definitions. We say that life cycle costs are summations of cost estimates from inception to disposal. In other words, when we start with a new system or we buy a new, a new machine or a new equipment or whatever and we, and we uh, live with it and we go on and we, and we uh, maintain it and we use it uh, for production purposes or whatever, and we go from the time that it was that it was uh, sort of uh, the idea was thought out in actual fact to have such a system up to the point where it's disposed of that is the life cycle cost now of course in, in practical terms when we're in a business we are interested from the point where we buy it until the point that we dispose of it Life cycle analysis helps engineers justify equipment and process selection based on total costs rather than on only the initial purchase price. Because sometimes the initial purchase price might be very, very uh, attractive with many systems. But very often the, the systems with the, with the most attractive purchasing price are the ones that will cost you most in the end. And that's why life cycle cost is so important to, es to estimate what is the life cycle cost of different systems, well, especially when you, when you purchase. Usually the cost of operation, maintenance and disposal costs exceed all other costs many times over. So we say that the best balance between costs, uh, among cost elements is achieved when the total life cycle cost is minimized. So that is the best balance that you can achieve. As with most engineering tools, life cycle cost provides best results when both art and science are merged with good judgment. So let us then let us then introduce this thing. We say that procurement costs are widely used as the primary and sometimes only criteria for equipment or system system selection. This single purpose criteria is simple to use but often results in bad financial decisions. The results may be damaging to the financial well-being of the business enterprise. So John Rustin says it's unwise to pay too much but it's foolish to spend too little. This is the operating principle of LCC. Now all, the, all of this comes from Barringer's document. So uh, he, he calls that the operating principle of, of, of life cycle cost. Uh, but I think that the, the point is that life cycle cost uh, is an important uh, thing to look at when you, when you buy uh, systems, but it's also important to analyze life cycle cost as you, as you live with systems, as you go along. So that you know exactly where are you moving, so that you know that a certain system is maybe very expensive and you might really think about replacing the system with one that has a lower life cycle cost uh, before it's too late. Uh, make that decision. Life cycle costs can be profitably used for, and here he makes a li list of things that you can do with life cycle costs. Uh, affordability studies when you, when you are still busy looking at, at either at systems that you want to buy 
or at systems that you have and whether you can afford to, to keep them or whether you need to replace them. Selection studies, uh, design trade-offs, trade uh, when, you, when you have to make decisions regarding different design routes to take, uh, because some design routes might be very expensive, but the life cycle cost might be much lower than, than for less expensive designs. A repair level analysis, in other words, how much should you repair, how much should you put into maintenance in terms of money, uh, uh, because you, you might spend much more in terms of maintenance, but in the end the life cycle might, uh, cost might, might reduce dramatically. Warranty and repair costs, uh, and then supplier sales strategies. Uh, and that's now for suppliers themselves, if they if they want to, to draft a, a style strategy, a, a supplier with a very expensive piece of equipment, but with but a super good piece of equipment, might might develop a life cycle profile to show to customers, man, you you can maybe get off uh, at a lower cost now, but look at the long term. So that type of thing. And then this comes from, from uh, uh, Benjamin Blanchard uh, in, in the systems engineering books and uh, uh, procurement cost is only the tip of the iceberg. There you have the acquisition cost is the only cost that, that you see above the water level here. It's the acquisition cost. But really what you buy, if you buy, you buy all of this. And you only see that little tip. And now you see different different systems with each with a tip sticking out. And now you go and you buy the one with the smallest tip. But you don't realize the reason why that tip is so small is because what's below is so heavy, it pulls it down. You 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 you, you see so little. Uh, and uh, so, so one must one must take cognizance of this that you have all of all of this stuff, uh, especially here we sit with maintenance cost, uh, test and support equipment cost. We sit with uh, uh, you know, their supply line, their training cost, material cost, uh, uh, whatever software cost, procedural cost. I cannot read all of them. Uh, but in any case, disposal cost, this is disposal cost. But the fact is that the, the idea that one must not only look at that, you must look at the whole thing. And that's what life cycle cost does if you, if you do it well. If you do it well. And then uh, Barringer said uh, that life cycle cost concepts are resurging. Life cycle cost limitations are now being accepted as normal restrictions uh, because there are limitations. You, you, you don't know all the costs perfectly. I mean, the, the big thing with life cycle cost is that many of these costs you must, you must estimate. You must, you must go and, and with, a, with a good engineering sense, a good uh, maintenance knowledge sense, whatever, you must go and come up. That sort of you. If, if I say thumbs up, maybe not that bad, but uh, the fact is that it is estimated. One must estimate. So it's not perfect, but uh, the, the the point is, I think that uh, if you if you don't estimate, you are probably worse off, because even a good estimate is better than nothing and not knowing. Usefulness has been demonstrated by passing the test of time with practitioners who have learned how to minimize life cycle cost limitations. So, so there are people that spend a lot of, of, of effort in getting life cycle cost uh, 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 models to work better. To work better. Limitations are now being accepted as normal restrictions. Usefulness has been demonstrated by passing the test of time with practitioners who have learned how to minimize life cycle cost limitations. 
Some of the more, most often life cycle cost limitations that people say, well, what, what are the problems with life cycle cost modeling? So they say that life cycle cost is not an exact science. And for sure it is not. For sure it is not, because you have to make assumptions. There's no, there's no doubt about it. You, you, you have to. But you will see now, as we go along, as we work through the example of Paul Berenger, you will see that it's not so inexact that you cannot w live with it. It's, uh, it's much better than having nothing. Life cycle cost outputs are only estimates. This is particularly true for cost and risk analysis. That's true. Life cycle cost estimates lack accuracy. It's true. It depends on how, uh, how well you think about situations. Because very often one can, one can get values that are nearer to truth than one thinks. Life cycle cost models operate with limited cost databases and the cost of acquiring data in the operating and support areas is both difficult to obtain and expensive to acquire. Life cycle cost models must be calibrated to be highly, uh, highly useful. Life cycle cost models requires volumes of data and only and often only a few hands full of data exist. Depends on how lazy you are. The fact is you can get things. Remember this adage when considering life cycle cost limitations. In the light land of the blind, a one-eyed man is king. So it's better than to have one eye than, than to be blind. Uh, so that's what, what Paul Berenger says. Life cycle cost can help improve our blinded sight. Intelligent estimates plus intelligent calculation plus heuristics is much better than heuristics alone. Now you know heuristics are sort of common sense. So they say, well, if you work with intelligent estimates and intelligent calculation plus common sense, then you're much better off than with common sense alone. Gut feel alone. So why use, why use life cycle cost? So why should engineers be concerned about life cycle cost? Remember again, my figures are so big because my, I use another keynote here. Uh, there are no free lunches. The customer who buys from your company pays for everything and he wants value for quality products and services at low prices. So, so one must be sure, as sure as you can about what you are doing. That's how if you, if, if, you, <coughs> if life cycle cost is your sort of, you, you sell things or whatever. The, secondly, the stockholder wants wealth created over time. Not breaking even and not losing money. They can, they see time as money and money as time. Thirdly, Engineers as stewards for the company must make wise decisions in the selection of processes and equipment to cover the risks incurred and thus generate wealth for the stakeholders. What really counts for owners is return on capital. Projects must exceed the minimum attractive rates of return so wealth is created for stockholders. Uh, net present value is an important economic measure for for projects or equipment, taking into account discount factors and cash flow. Cash flow for any company is very important. Positive cash flow into the company assures a going concern. The concept is simple. No cash, no company. Okay, so, and then we come to, a, to an example, and, uh, and, and this is really what fixes this thing, because now you, now you get practical about it. I mean, you can make long lists of benefits and so on, but when you when you get to the to this, then uh, now 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 it proves itself. Uh, now I must just say there's two examples here that we will be working on. Both both are in that document of Paul Berenger, uh, and they are very similar. So one tend to think that the example two is a modification of example one, but it's not really true. It's two completely different examples. Both of them works with pumps and so on, so it would seem as if it is. I think maybe originally he had the idea to, 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 to modify example one into uh, example two, 
but it is not really the case. So one must just make sure that you understand that. Otherwise, you might get confused. With, uh, especially now with example two. Example one is okay. Two alternatives are being considered for installing an online spare pump in parallel with an existing NC grade pump to avoid outages that have plagued a chemical plant. So you have a pump. This pump fails too, may, uh, may, uh, too, too much. And because of that, you have losses. So what you're now uh, considering is, is installing a spare pump in parallel with the existing pump. That's the idea. The parallel pump, which will be operated every other week on a rotation schedule and whenever pump failure occurs, this is an incremental investment operation, will save on the average $12,000 per year in out-of-pocket reduction losses for products which cannot be shipped during the outages. So it is a standby pump. It's not, they say, uh, uh, an online spare pump and it would seem as if it's, uh, both pumps are online, that's not true. It's a, sh it's a, it's a standby pump. So they say it will be operated every other week on a rotation schedule so that it can uh, keep to be operative well can, can work well uh, so what they will be doing is they will be using the spare pump stopping this one for a week and then changing over for the other week for the other one again and so on uh, and also when ever pump failure occurs that's logical and so they will save 12,000 US dollars Pumps under consideration with expected 20-year lives, so all of them have an expected 20-year life, are another NC pump at $8,000 installed cost. So that's the one option. Second one, an NC enhanced pump at $18,000 in the installed pump cost. And the third one is just leave the present pump situation to now. So either and, and, and similar pump or a, a copy pump or an advanced pump or not. Which course of action should we recommend using the concepts described above? Consider alternatives given below by the way year zero is now and year one is next year. So year zero is today. Uh, year one is in a year's time. The end of this period, the beginning of the next year. Okay. So that's decisions that one has to make. So what does what goes into life cycle cost? Uh, and 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 this comes from from standards that that is available in in, in the the world. I can't remember what what standard it is now, but it is. Uh, it is one or the other uh, uh, ISO standard that this comes from. In other words, what, what do you do? Uh, so, there you have 11 steps, and that is what you, what you do. So, you start by defining the problem uh, requiring life cycle cost, then you look at alternatives. Uh, and uh, acquisition costs, sustaining costs, you, you identify that. You prepare, prepare a, co a, a cost breakdown structure or tree. You choose the analytical cost model that you will be using. You gather cost estimates and cost, uh, uh, cost models, whatever that is. Uh, make cost profiles for each year of study. Uh, and those are deterministic cost profiles. Uh, make break-even charts for alternatives. Pareto charts of, uh, of the vital few cost contributors in, in, in the process. Sensitivity analysis of high costs and, and reasons. Study risks of high cost items and occurrences. Select preferred course of action using life cycle costs. Those steps one by one. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing that one must understand, you will see in, in point two, it says alternatives and acquisition and sustaining costs. Uh, now, we show here, we show that there are these two costs, acquisition costs and sustaining costs, the two parts of life cycle costs. Uh, remember, below frequently the cost of sustaining equipment is 2 to 20 times the acquisition cost. So one has to take both into account. It's often cited the rule of thumb is 65% of total life cycle cost is set when the equipment is specified. Uh, and then one has this uh, uh, acquisition cost 3 cost three, there you have the three types of costs, research and development costs, non-recurring investment costs and recurring investment costs and you have sort of checklists to make sure that you get to all the costs that are involved. So you must think about each of those little blocks when you, when you go along. Okay, so, so there are they are just uh, brain products those, those blocks checklist so that is the acquisition cost and there is the sustaining cost three scheduled and unscheduled scheduled maintenance cost facility usage cost disposal cost so again you you go and use that as a checklist uh, and then uh, we're looking into uh, four alternative definitions of life cycle cost the first one uh, life cycle cost equal, equals non-recurring cost plus recurring costs. Uh, secondly, life cycle cost is the initial price plus warranty cost plus repair and maintenance and operating cost to end users. Third definition, life cycle cost is manufacturer's cost plus maintenance cost and downtime cost to end users. Uh, SAE also has a life cycle cost model directed towards a manufacturing environment. Uh, life cycle cost equal acquisition costs plus operating costs plus scheduled maintenance plus unscheduled maintenance plus conversion and decommissioning and that is then the SAE life cycle cost model uh, so there you have acquisition cost, operating cost, scheduled maintenance cost, unscheduled maintenance cost and uh, whatever something decommissioning cost what, what was that uh, conversion and decommissioning cost ok some trade off tools for life cycle cost we say the issue is finding a system effectiveness value which gives lowest long term cost of ownership which is uh, system effectiveness is effectiveness divided by life cycle cost. And effectiveness is the availability times reliability times maintainability times capability. In plain English, the effectiveness equation is the product of the chance that the equipment or system will be available to perform its duty, that's the availability. The probability that it will operate for a given time without failure, that's the reliability. Uh, the the, uh, the probability that it will be repaired without excessive loss maintenance time and the fourth one the probability that it can perform its indented production activity according to the standard so that is then, then that and that divided by the life cycle cost gives you the system effect so we say the issue is finding a system effectiveness value which gives lowest long term cost of ownership. System effectiveness equations are helpful for understanding benchmarks, past, present and future status as shown in the figure below for understanding trade off information. Uh, and here we now have a, a sort of a figure and we have a, a, a table. Now the table lists now the, the quantities availability, reliability, maintainability, and capability. And it sort of says, well, 
the last plant that we had, that's the values. This is the new plant that we think that is the best plant. And we can now calculate for each of them, we can calculate the, the effectiveness. And if we have the life cycle cost, we can then eventually calculate the, the system effectiveness, uh, which is that effectiveness divided by the life cycle cost. Uh, and we can place them on a graph like this to say, well, okay, uh, last plant A sits here, uh, plant B sits up there, and plant C sits, sits up there, and you, you can then decide, well, uh, you can make decisions regarding where, where do you head. So it's something to help one. So we say the lower right-hand corner of figure 6 brings much joy, this one here the best, uh, and happiness often described as bang for the buck. In other words, we have high effectiveness and we have low life cycle cost. That is really the, the, the best situation. The upper left-hand corner brings much grief, that's the worst, uh, and the remaining two corners raises questions about worth and value. So, both these, one would ask yourself, well, uh, are they really, you see, this is now the new plant, this is the, this is the old plant, the last plant that you had, it had a low life cycle cost, but also low effectiveness, and you would like to, to get in this direction here, instead of going up there, uh, getting a new plant, uh, high effectiveness, but also high life cycle cost. Uh, maybe not such a good, good idea to, to go there. So maybe you want to relook the design of that plant or something like that. Uh, the fact is that you can take good decisions based on, on things like that. Uh, and then on, on that graph, one can then see what, what you would like to do. So you say that uh, here you have an, 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 a situation A and a situation B with the same effectiveness, different life cycle cost, then for sure you say that A is preferable. I mean this, this is an easy situation, same effectiveness for lower cost. This is the better situation. In B, you sit with this, so you say that A is preferable because if you have the same cost but a higher effectiveness. Of course, the problems become well, become when you when you sit in a situation like this. You say A is preferable because A costs less and has a lower life cycle cost. But if you have this type of situation, you have to you say A is preferable if delta E is worth more than delta C, then A would be preferable. So uh, there's an there's an if if concern. Then here you have uh, the old graph that shows the various uh, phases in the design of, of, of a thing and the building of a, of a system uh, and what happens regarding uh, the engineering decisions that you make. So we say that this is the life cycle cost. Or let's first say, let's first look at this red line. This is the funds committed. So we say that when we start designing a system, of course you've committed no costs, nothing. But uh, this graph says that by the end of the conceptual design, you've already committed 66% of your life cycle cost. Your total life cycle cost is committed. In other words, you can do nothing about it anymore. It's, it's finished. Past due. Gone. You don't have that opportunity anymore. So that first 66% you, you decide during the conceptual phase of your design. So that's why it's so important for, for, for uh, uh, businesses and practicing maintenance people and so on to go up into the design line and go and influence designs before they get to you. 
because you have to make sure that your life cycle cost is is as low as possible and you see that 66 percent is is committed already during conceptual design this says demonstration and validation uh, here you have engineering manufacturing construction now normally you would talk of conceptual design and and preliminary design and detail design and, and development doesn't matter what what the names are but the figures are fairly consistent to say that 95% of your decisions have been made before you get the piece of equipment. 95% of your life cycle costs is fixed. So you only have a chance to play around with the other 5%. That's all you can do in practice. So uh, that's why it's so important to make sure that you get the right thing. So the opposite of this is, what is the chance, the probability to reduce life cycle cost uh, is just the opposite of this one, it's just the other way around. So we say that at this stage you only have 5% probable of a, a cost reduction opportunity left. Here you sit with a 33% that's left. Uh, that's all. And then this is the actual funds expended. So you don't expend that much during this period. The, the actual funds are expended here, but the problem is that the that the, uh, the the profile with which it takes place, this this cost expenditure, is fixed for ninety five percent by that time. Okay. So this says act early in the life cycle. Act early in the life cycle. That's so important. Some trade-off tools for life cycle cost. Uh, in actual fact, we were busy with trade-off tools, so this is just an added one. Uh, engineering sizes and aims the cost funnel. Engineering, then, the design people that designs the system. They sizes and aims the cost funnel, and production and maintenance pours money into the funnel. So that's what we do for us. That's, that's our only job, is to pour money into that funnel that has already been aimed. Consider life cycle cost early in the game. Breaking poverty cycles of building cheap plants and repairing them often at great expense can be accomplished in at least two ways. This is now Barringer talking, of course. Uh, can be accomplished in at least two ways. Use life cycle techniques or otherwise you must make the capital project team indentured servants for at least eight years to operate the plant so that new projects are designed for at least the least long-term cost of ownership and so that it builds wealth for stockholders so you must make sure that they are they are also the maintainers and the upkeepers of, of that plant and that they have a cost profile by which they must abide and so on so you make sure that they do whatever they need Okay, so some engineering facts. Uh, life, life cycle cost requires facts which are driven by data. Most engineers are of the opinion that they lack data. In fact, data is widely available as a starting point for life cycle cost. And that is uh, 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 taken from Bloch in 1995. Now, Bloch is a, is a guy who wrote a, a range of thick books on, on on maintenance, uh, quite quite good books, uh, exceptionally. Well, I won't say exceptionally, but they are exceptionally good. Uh, good books. So that's what he says. So follow the guidelines for each step as listed in figure figure one. So step one is to find the problem. Now uh, we look at our example. Uh, a pump is operating without an online spare, a pump failure, the, the process shuts down, and financial losses are incurred as each hour of downtime results in a gross margin loss of $4,000 per hour of outage. Find an effective life cycle cost alternative as the plant has an estimated 10 years of remaining life and is expected to be sold out during this interval. So that's what you then do. Step two. 
alternatives and acquisitions of sustaining costs. The one is do nothing, continue solo ANC pump. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of that. Secondly, add a new second ANC pump in parallel, the same thing, a redundant standby. Uh, and thirdly, remove the existing solo ANC pump and replace it with a new solo ANC API pump with the same performance for the ANC as, the, as for the ANC model. Uh, and then you go and you work through those lists and you go and see what are involved. And that's what the, the marks is for. So they made those decisions, said, well, all the, those things, we must get costs and figures and so on. Uh, so those are the cost components for the solo NC pump. Those are the cost components for the parallel or redundant NC pumps. So that first one is for that first one is for the pump as it is, just the pump that we have now. Second one is for the parallel or redundant NC pumps, and this this is the cost components for a solo a solo API pump. Step four: choose the analytical cost model that you will be using. The model used for this case is explained in an engineering spreadsheet, which is uh, the, that link that you have there, that you can also get. Let me just show you that. There it is. That is his, uh, his, uh, his banner. This this thing here. And then there's the life cycle cost worksheet, and an example, and another example. Okay. So again, it's there for your for your use. Step five, uh, gather cost estimates and cost models. This is a complicated section where all details are assembled. Of course, the more thorough the collection process, the better the life cycle cost model. For this tutorial, the details have been shortened with just enough information described to show the trends. Uh, alternative number one, do nothing case, the datum. Uh, there they've made all their assumptions, the... Uh, Capital cost are zero, lost cost margin occurs at $4,000 per hour. But you can go and work through that. It's, a, it's a, a little bit of a detailed thing that one must uh, think through each of the figures. Why why did he choose that and so on. And then and then you get the, the various tables. That is his non-annualized acquisition and sustaining cost for that pump. There is his annual sustaining cost for that pump. So, so there he has the two the two facets of, of, of the life cycle cost model. That, that's the second alternative and each tables and the third alternative and each tables and then you make cost profiles for each year of study and that is for the for the three there you have the three alternatives and it's now the, those information on those tables have now been taken into, into this and now you get you can see that uh, you have various net present values for the various uh, models. There's the one for the existing solo NC minus $203,000, minus $89,000, minus $183,000. Uh, so that is the add the parallel redundant. This one is replace the NC pump with a solo API pump. Uh, well, I, I said that there's two examples. The, you add that example one, and that read differently from what I did here. That's what I really was talking about. So he, in the middle of his stuff, he changes his model or his, his example, and one must just be aware of that. Uh, but it's, if you understand that, then you won't be so confused. Because I was very confused initially. I really battled with this. Why? Where, where does he get this now? 
and then I saw no, but this is, is uh, completely, he's, he's com confused, not me. Uh, but in any case, it's a, it's a wonderful thing that he's done here. Uh, and it's simple, it's, there's nothing complicated in this. Completely discrete, in other words, you get one value eventually. So based on these alternatives, adding the ANSI pump in parallel looks more attractive based on the net present value at the 12% discount rate. You, you saw that that one, uh, you saw that that, that one had, had the, 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 the least negative net present value. Remember, this is just cost figure, so that's why it's negative. In other words, there's no, no profit involved. It's cost that you that you that you pay out. But but that is the least expensive one. Is that it's the best one. Uh, and it and this thing even takes uh, takes uh, tax into account everything. Uh, based on these alternatives adding the NC pump in parallel looks the best. Uh, it's clear that this that the case with the smallest loss will be the most attractive case. And then step seven, make break-even charts for alternatives. Break-even charts are useful tools for showing effects of fixed or variable costs. And if you look at that one, the parallel NC pump cost line, uh, parallel NC cost line is that one there, that purple one there what he's talking about uh, crosses the datum line for the solo NC pump solo NC pump is the black one uh, in one year so that the costs are less for redundant system after passing the one year mark so it's very fast that it, that it crosses there the solo API pump crosses the datum line in five years and the costs are less than the solo NC pump but the redundant NC pump system continues to have a smaller cost and is thus much more desirable, it's much more flat there. So it's a much better solution, much better option. So, um, uh, but this is extra information, helps you. Step eight, Pareto charts of the vital fuel cost contributors. So you do that, and in this case, this is the solo NC Pareto cost. Uh, what, what are the highest costs uh, that, that's involved? So there's the lost margin, that's, that's the highest uh, contributor. Second one, the power. And then uh, whatever that is, uh, uh, that electricity, maintenance, whatever, parts, logistics, so on. Uh, parallel redundant NC pump. Uh, yeah, you don't have the losses anymore, you just have the power and so on. And then solo API uh, still has a lost margin because you only still that only have one pump, you will it will it will it will not have the same high losses as the old pump, but still. Uh, and then step nine Repair sensitivity analysis of high costs and reasons for high costs. Unreliability can be reduced by using a higher grade pump, as shown in figure 15, uh, the Pareto of the API pump, or the penalty of lost gross, lost gross margin is avoided by using a redundant pump, as shown in figure 14, which is the Pareto for the redundant NC pumps. Many industrial organizations, so what we what are we saying there? Uh, so we can we can uh, reduce the reliability by using this one. In other words, well, we we have a higher reliability, so we we have a lower lost margin than in the first case. In this case, we had a nearly thirty-five thousand dollars lost margin. In this case, we only have twenty-three thousand uh, dollars lost margin. So so that's what we say. Uh, the the other thing the other thing that we say is that uh, uh, the other thing that we can do or the penalty of the loss gross margin is avoided by using a redundant pump because then you don't have that loss margin in, in any way it's, 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 it's gone so you, you lose that, that loss uh, 
many industrial organizations concentrate on small incremental gains of working faster, which feels good but isn't too effective, rather than using a smarter reliability strategy to avoid the breakdowns. That is preventing the problem rather than providing efficient first aid responses, which are the root cause for loss of gross margins. Uh, and the, uh, this is important. One issue is hidden in figures 13 and 15, raises its head in figure 14. It is the cost of electrical power, because now in, 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 in figure 14, you don't have the lost margin anymore. So now the power shows as the biggest one. So now you see, well, power is also a big factor. It's also a big factor. Uh, energy savings by the use of high efficiency motors can save 2 to 5% of the total power cost. And choosing high efficiency internals for the pumps can save 5 to 10% of the total power cost. If pump internals were selected for 80%, pump efficiency rather than the 70% efficiency used for the calculations, the lower power consumed would be $14,000, which results in a savings of $2,000 each year, or about equal to all maintenance labor efforts spent to collect payments. So you get that as, a, as an extra benefit during the analysis process. Uh, So there we have a table with uh, all the alternatives and the, and the figures compared and so on. Uh, so you see that the uh, fuel and seat pump has a much higher effectiveness than, than either of those two and a much lower life cycle cost. Uh, so it just makes sense. And it's because of the higher reliability. That's where you really when you win there as well in availability but the reliability is really the one where you, where you score and that's the reason behind that and then you can look at life cycle cost versus effectiveness of, of, of those which clearly shows that that uh, dual NC pump is the, is the right one uh, highest effectiveness of all three and the uh, lowest loss of all three, lowest cost of all three. Step 10, study the risks of the high cost items and occurrences. So now you can, now you can go and look at, at even at, at uh, now if they talk here, this is now from Bloch, if they now talk failure rate, force of mortality, that's what they're talking uh, so yeah, you have the various things and so on and, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, I'll have to study this thing before I can really present it. So please go and do that. <laughs> Compare data to uh, uh, table 12 to table 5 and table 7 for NC pumps and the data looks comparable. So where, from where did the failure rate for the pump housing come? Use experience or other sources, one-stop shopping for failure rates. So what they're saying is that you can get figures like this from, from uh, sources like this, but you cannot get everything. Some, some of it you must sort of think out yourself. You must, there's no one-stop source uh, so the you will see that there is nothing for the pump housing here and that's what he's talking about he's talking about the pump housing that they say you, you cannot get everything from here from a single source step 11 select the preferred course of action using life cycle cost the selection of parallel and redundant strategy using NC pumps is the most attractive alternative out of the three proposed because it avoids process failure and thus reduces the high cost of unreliability. And then the last thing is then now we come to, to uh, Monte Carlo. Adding uncertainty to the life cycle results. You now have a model that can do the job. 
but you don't have any uncertainty in it. Your, your values would seem to be discrete, singular values. But now you say, well, maybe that's not true. Maybe that's not true. So now you add uncertainty. Each element in the above life cycle computation uh, is uncertain. A better statistical distribution for explaining the life and repair times for the equipment of Heibel distributions. Heibel failure database information is available to supplement earlier mentioned failure data from Bloch and Geithner. A partial listing of Heibel database is shown in table 13. Recent papers describe how to put the Heibel database information to work. It's Weber. And uh, there they have now... Uh, typical Bible failure data. So now, now for the same situation, they now have, instead of, they have beta Bible shape factors, low values, typical values, high values. Beta values, low, typical, high for the various components here. And now you can start, start doing a, a proper thing. Uh, so yeah, you now have, have your, 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 your uh, uh, I'm not sure one will have to check on this equation, it, uh, I, I think it's the, the normal, it's the, this, this should be FT if I'm correct, I'm not sure. Now. But in any case, what, what, what is a Monte Carlo H to failure solving the Bible equation for time? Okay, 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 for time. So, so by when will it fail? Uh, this is the, the this is FT, the, the, the density function. The cumulative density function, the capital FT, this is what that is. So it is uh, the natural logarithm of 1 over 1 minus capital FT, all of that to the power 1 over beta, and that times eta gives you the time to fail and you then use that in a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, table 14, the next slide shows how Monte Carlo simulation works for the unpaired, unspared NC pump or for a single in NC pump in other words. Uh, in section A, the variable values are used with random numbers to draw a random H to failure. In section B, the numbers of failures are added for cumulative failure results. In section 3, C, the cumulative failures are normalized to an annual basis. In section D, costs are added. Uh, it's slightly overstated. Compare annual costs of table 14 with the results from table 5. So this is uh, table 14, is this one. The, uh, so there it now gives you uh, this the thing, uh, project year and annual cost expected from simulation. Uh, one will have to go and make a little bit of a study, I have not done that. Uh, but in any case, now you, now you do a Monte Carlo simulation and you get a better solution like we did with the with the, uh, with the example from, from, from this solver. Uh, adding uncertainty to the uh, life cycle cost. Why spend the time and effort building such complicated analysis schemes? schemes? Monte Carlo simulations are more correct than the generalized and simplified data. The Excel spreadsheet from table 14 is available for download from the World Wide Web and can serve as guide for building more complicated analyses to obtain more accurate life cycle cost information. Uh, notice the number of seal failures and bearing failures are approximately the same, which justifies the usual good maintenance practice of replacing both units when either fail. Some comments regarding that. Uh, and then when we performing iterations manually by pressing the F9 key for the Excel spreadsheet. Notice occasions when seals or bearings will incur two failures in the same yearly interval, just as sometimes occurs in real life. Also studying the spreadsheet using the order tool from the Excel menu will make an 
calculations to know how you'll understand the rules. Students can modify the spreadsheet as required to make their results real life rather than rely on the magic of the computer. Remember this scenario is built to teach and not to represent all real world problems. For Monte Carlo models, which is best? A large number of iterations or averaging the results from a moderate number of iterations. Generally speaking, find the correct number of iterations by using the jackknife technique to study errors in the final results. You run two moderate size iterations and compare the results by looking at the differences in the calculated numbers. Double the number of iterations until the errors appear fairly small and then double the number of iterations for the final one. Life cycle cost is simply a way to a way stop on the never ending journey of reducing cost. Life cycle cost is clearly not a destination. Life cycle cost provides the tools to engineer maintenance budgets and costs. Okay, so that is then uh, life cycle cost.